the CEO of NPR, who also happens to be a woman, says that truth is a distraction um, and that it often gets in the way of consensus and getting important things done. What could be so important to a woman for her to say truth doesn't matter? The answer to that question is when she's on the left, everything. Elon Musk retweeted this six hours ago. It already has 20 million views. <laughs> bro, these degenerate women are not safe out here, bro. You say something stupid, Elon Musk, the most impressive man in the world, just might retweet you <laughs> and let everyone see. And then, of course, I will make a video about you um, to my couple thousand followers, although we are gaining followers very rapidly. Let's take a listen to what this titan this intellectual titan has to say maybe she has a deep philosophical reason that transcends even plato or socrates as to why truth isn't so important Let, let's give it a listen i think our reverence for the truth might become might have become a bit of a distraction that is preventing us from finding consensus so as you guys know the most important thing in the world to me is truth it's on my channel it's on my ex it's, it's on my X profile. A word of truth outweighs the world. I literally believe that. I believe it is a technically true statement you can make about the fabric of reality that a word of truth outweighs the world. And this woman just said it gets in the way of something. A bit it's, of a distraction. That it's is a dis preventing us from finding consensus. So it gets in the way of finding consensus. What type of consensus would you want to have if it's not built on coherence and merit and logic, rationality, basically the mechanisms that reveal objective reality, objective reality being truth, by the way. There are many forms, there, there, or I should say there are many domains where, object, where you can look at objective reality. It can be in science, biology, physics. Those are the ones you quickly and easily think of when you think of objective truth because numbers are associated with representing reality. For instance, the pull of gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second. That is an objective measurement. If you were to say that it is 10 meters per second, you would be objectively wrong. Same is true in biology. If you were to say men can get pregnant, you would be objectively wrong because men don't have a uterus. I'm still waiting for leftists to start beefing with gravity. Maybe that'll be next month. Oh my gosh, Newton was a white man. That means that gravity is fake. But objective reality extends to all things, including morality. And that's really what gets in the way of leftists because they want virtue and merit to emulate directly from their ideology. They don't want to be holden to any exterior apparatus of accountability. They want to be the apparatus of accountability virtue, merit, status, so they can call themselves good people and everyone agrees, even though they are the most depraved, lunatic, deranged humans that the world has to offer. So you, you see that here when they admit, and the thing is, is she doesn't think this is going to go bad for her. She's probably in a room of people that agree with her, and that's the reason she feels comfortable to say this, forgetting, of course, in the typical psychopathic, narcissistic tendency of the female psyche when you're on the left that she will be judged. The reason why she's not thinking about being judged in this moment as she says this ludicrous statement is because she believes she's above reality. She believes that she doesn't have to be accountable to anything because that's what she practices telling herself all the time. I think our reverence for the truth might become, might have become a bit of a distraction that is preventing us from finding consensus and getting- So there you hear the narcissism admitted to. If the truth is a distraction, then to what standard do they hold themselves and to what mechanism do they attribute that standard's validity? My standard is the truth because truth is good. Their standard is their ideology because their ideology grants counterfeit virtue. This is, of course, why you see overweight, green-haired, People, uh, people who have rejected the notion of objective truth. I've made videos about this. I even once made a video about a guy who said he was more competent than Elon Musk and could beat Andrew Tate in a fight. And he also tweeted at me that objective truth doesn't exist. So, of course, I made a video about him and, and exposed him to thousands. But really, this is the position of all of the left. They, they don't think they have to be beholden to, to any standard of objectivity because... Their ideology is the encompassing aspect of the entire world. This is, of course, their narcissism exposed. 
It's so pathetic. Completely pathetic. She said this as if she thought this would be acceptable. A bit of a distraction that is preventing us from finding consensus. Consensus. It's Orwellian. But of course, she said this as if it was fine. Meaning that the degenerate female psyche thinks there should be consensus outside of the truth. And of course, this reflects and echoes the, the notion and the ethos of the female psyche, which is we must avoid conflict. We, even, even if it's to build something better, this is the reason why they don't believe in free speech, by the way. Because free speech on some level is conflict. In order to engage in dialogue and discourse with somebody else, you have to risk the, you know, there being some tension or some disagreement so you can build something better. As a matter of fact, if you're going to care about truth, there's inevitably going to be, be disagreement when you discuss things with people because nobody has the full picture. No one has the full picture of reality. So when you have a conversation with somebody else, even if, let's say, you know 90, even, even let's say you are 99.9% .9 correct, there's still going to be an element in which you do not fully understand the system. And so you still engage in free speech. This is the reason why free speech is enshrined as the First Amendment. Women don't believe in the First Amendment, and you see this exposed in the less constant attacks on free speech. Kamala Harris literally ran on curtailing freedom. Kamala Harris ran on censoring people. Tim Waltz said the same thing. Now, of course, we have the opposite because what? We have a masculine billionaire that's going to be in office. A man who clearly is used to competition, <laughs> used to conflict, and so he's not afraid of free speech and understands the necessity of it because he's competent. Women who are incompetent and fear conflict do not want to allow for free speech because it, it invalidates their entire organizational structure of their psyche. It eviscerates it because if you can say to a woman who says something nonsensical, that doesn't make sense, then she's either being oppressed, which is what she tells herself, or she's wrong, which she never tells herself. So that means she's being oppressed and you're the enemy for speaking the truth. This is a critical flaw of the left-wing ideology and is the reason why proclivity to abide in left-wing authoritarianism has been positively, positively measured to correlate with a feminine personality distribution. So... This is a very, very important clip. It's only 10 seconds, but it speaks, it speaks volumes, literally volumes. I could write volumes about this, but I appreciate you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We gained like 14 subscribers last night from, from a short that I released. I'm going to be releasing a lot more shorts, but it's not going well for the left because everyone can see their insanity. And now the standard is actual reality rather than placating to these delusional insane freaks.